Part 8 of Ancient Greek Philosopher Scientists This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Graham Redman Ancient Greek Philosopher Scientists a collection of their surviving words reported in ancient sources and translated by various translators. Part 8. Testimonials on Thales of Miletus, translated by Arthur Fairbanks in The First Philosophers of Greece. Plato on the Laws, 10, 899b. And as for all the stars and the moon and the years and the months and all the seasons, can we hold any other opinion about them than this same one, that inasmuch as soul or souls appear to be the cause of all these things, and good souls the cause of every excellence, we are to call them gods, whether they order the whole heavens as living beings in bodies, or whether they accomplish this in some other form and manner. Is there any one who acknowledges this, and yet holds that all things are not full of gods? Aristotle Metaphysics 1, 3, 983, b. 6 most of the early students of philosophy thought that first principles in the form of matter, and only these, are the sources of all things. For that of which all things consist, the antecedent from which they have sprung, and into which they are finally resolved, in so far as being underlies them and is changed with their changes, this, they say, is the element and first principle of things. Aristotle, Metaphysics, 1, 3, 983, b. 18. As to the quantity and form of this first principle, there is a difference of opinion. But Thales, the founder of this sort of philosophy, says that it is water. Accordingly, he declares that the earth rests on water, getting the idea, I suppose, because he saw that the nourishment of all beings is moist, and that warmth itself is generated from moisture and persists in it, for that from which all things spring is the first principle of them. And getting the idea also from the fact that the germs of all beings are of a moist nature, while water is the first principle of the nature of what is moist. And there are some who think that the ancients, and they who lived long before the present generation, and the first students of the gods, had a similar idea in regard to nature. For in their poems Oceanos and Tethys were the parents of generation, and that by which the gods swore was water. The poets themselves called it Styx. For that which is most ancient is most highly esteemed and that which is most highly esteemed is an object to swear by. Whether there is any such ancient and early opinion concerning nature would be an obscure question, but Thales is said to have expressed this opinion in regard to the first cause. Aristotle on Heavens 2, 13, 294a28 some say that the earth rests on water. We have ascertained that the oldest statement of this character is the one accredited to Thales the Milesian, to the effect that it rests on water floating like a piece of wood or something else of that sort. Aristotle on the Soul 1, 2, 405, A19 and Thales, according to what is related of him, seems to have regarded the soul as something endowed with the power of motion, if indeed he said that the lodestone has a soul because it moves iron. Aristotle on the Soul, 1, 5, 411, A7 Some say that soul is diffused throughout the whole universe, 
and it may have been this which led Thales to think that all things are full of gods. Simplicius, Commentary on Aristotle's On the Soul, 8, R32, 16, 3. Thales posits water as the element, but it is the element of bodies, and he thinks that the soul is not a body at all. Speaking thus of Thales, he adds with a degree of reproach that he assigned a soul to the magnetic stone as the power which moves the iron, that he might prove soul to be a moving power in it. But he did not assert that this soul was water, although water had been designated as the element, since he said that water is the element of substances, but he supposed soul to be unsubstantial form. Simplicius, Commentary on Aristotle's On the Soul, 20, R. 73, 22. For Thales also, I suppose, thought all things to be full of gods, the gods being blended with them. And this is strange. Simplicius, Commentary on Aristotle's Physics, 6 R. 23, 21. Of those who say that the first principle is one and movable, to whom Aristotle applies the distinctive name of physicists, some say that it is limited, as for instance Thales of Miletus, son of Examayes, and Hippo who seems also to have lost belief in the gods. These say that the first principle is water, and they are led to this result by things that appear to sense, for warmth lives in moisture, and dead things wither up, and all germs are moist, and all nutriment is moist. Now it is natural that things should be nourished by that from which each has come, and water is the first principle of moist nature. Accordingly they assume that water is the first principle of all things, and they assert that the earth rests on water. Thales is the first to have set on foot the investigation of nature by the Greeks, although so many others preceded him, in Theophrastus's opinion, he so far surpassed them as to cause them to be forgotten. It is said that he left nothing in writing except a book entitled Nautical Astronomy. Hippolytus, Philosophumina I it is said that Thales of Miletus, one of the seven wise men, was the first to undertake the study of physical philosophy. He said that the beginning, the first principle, and the end of all things is water. All things acquire firmness as this solidifies, and again as it is melted their existence is threatened. To this are due earthquakes and whirlwinds and movements of the stars. And all things are movable and in a fluid state, the character of the compound being determined by the nature of the principle from which it springs. This principle is God, and it has neither beginning nor end. Thales was the first of the Greeks to devote himself to the study and investigation of the stars, and was the originator of this branch of science. On one occasion he was looking up at the heavens, and was just saying he was intent on studying what was overhead, when he fell into a well. Whereupon a maidservant named Thratta laughed at him and said, In his zeal for things in the sky, he does not see what is at his feet. And he lived in the time of Croesus. Plutarch, Stromatice, 1. He says that Thales was the earliest thinker to regard water as the first principle of all things. For from this all things come, and to it they all return. Aetius, Placiter Philosophorum, 1, 2. Thales of Miletus regards the first principle and the elements as the same thing. But there is a very great difference between them, for elements are composite, but we claim that first principles are neither composite nor the result of processes. 
So we call earth, water, air, fire, elements, and we call them first principles for the reason that there is nothing antecedent to them from which they are sprung, since this would not be a first principle, but rather that from which it is derived. Now there is something anterior to earth and water from which they are derived, namely the matter that is formless and invisible, and the form which we call entelechy and privation. So Thales was in error when he called water an element and a first principle. 1. 3. 276. Thales the Milesian declared that the first principle of things is water. This man seems to have been the first philosopher, and the Ionic school derived its name from him, for there were very many successive leaders in philosophy. And Thales was a student of philosophy in Egypt, but he came to Miletus in his old age, for he says that all things come from water and are resolved into water. The first basis for this conclusion is the fact that the seed of all animals is their first principle, and it is moist. Thus it is natural to conclude that all things come from water as their first principle. Secondly, the fact that all plants are nourished by moisture and bear fruit, and unless they get moisture, they wither away. Thirdly, the fact that the very fire of the sun and the stars is fed by the exhalations from the waters, and so is the universe itself. 1. 7. 301. Thales said that the mind in the universe is God, and the all is endowed with soul and is full of spirits and its divine moving power pervades the elementary water. 1.8.307 Thales et Aelii say that spirits are psychical beings, and that heroes are souls separated from bodies, good heroes are good souls, bad heroes are bad souls. 1.8.307 the followers of Thales et Aelii assert that matter is turned about, varying, changing, and in a fluid state, the whole in every part of the whole. 1. 12. 310. Thales and his successors declared that the first cause is immovable. 1. 16. 314. The followers of Thales and Pythagoras hold that bodies can receive impressions and can be divided even to infinity, and so can all figures, lines, surfaces, solids, matter, place, and time. 1. 18. 315. The physicists, followers of Thales, all recognize that the void is really a void. 1. 21. 321. Thales. Necessity is most powerful, for it controls everything. 2. 1. Thales and his successors hold that the universe is one. 2. 12. 340. Thales et Aelii hold that the sphere of the entire heaven is divided into five circles which they call zones, and of these the first is called the Arctic zone and is always visible, the next is the summer solstice, the next is the equinoctial, the next the winter solstice, and the next the Antarctic, which is invisible. And the ecliptic in the three middle ones is called the zodiac, and is projected to touch the three middle ones. All these are cut by the meridian at a right angle from the north to the opposite quarter. 2. 13. 341. The stars consist of earth, 
but are on fire. Two twenty three hundred and forty nine. The sun consists of earth. Two twenty four three hundred and fifty three. The eclipses of the sun take place when the moon passes across it in direct line, since the moon is earthy in character, and it seems to the eye to be laid on the disk of the sun. 228, 358. The moon is lighted from the sun. 229, 360. Thales et Aelii agree with the mathematicians that the monthly phases of the moon show that it travels along with the sun and is lighted by it, and eclipses show that it comes into the shadow of the earth, the earth coming between the two heavenly bodies and blocking the light of the moon. 3, 9 to 10, 376. The earth is one and spherical in form. 3, 11, 377. It is in the midst of the universe. 3, 15, 379. Thales and Democritus find in water the cause of earthquakes. 4, 1, 384. Thales thinks that the Etesian winds blowing against Egypt raise the mass of the Nile, because its outflow is beaten back by the swelling of the sea which lies over against its mouth. 4, 2, 386. Thales was the first to declare that the soul is by nature always moving or self-moving. 5, 26, 438. Plants are living animals. This is evident from the fact that they wave their branches and keep them extended, and they yield to attack and relax them freely again, so that weights also draw them down. Cicero, On the Nature of Gods, 1.10 For Thales of Miletus, who first studied these matters, said that water is the first principle of things, while God is the mind which formed all things from water. If gods exist without sense and mind, why should God be connected with water, if mind itself can exist without a body. End of part eight. Recording by Graham Redman.